today I have a very interesting topic to share with you all and actually this article I read this online but this really caught my interest so we are going to be talking about it today and let me know in the comments down below if you all agree to this because I can say that majority of what these people are saying are actually true so I'm gonna read it to you all from my laptop all right so the article says here that there are five reasons Millennials are losing hair and there are actually a lot of factors but I'm gonna be sharing with you all at least five it is said here that um, hair loss and balding are something we associate with aging and not a younger population yet more and more Millennials will say they're experiencing hair loss and it says here too that there are many known causes for hair loss in young women including hormonal changes autoimmune diseases thyroid disorder and stress. As millennials age to their 20s and 30s, they are faced with sobering condition hair loss. The American Hair Loss Association explained that two-thirds of men have some hair loss by age 25, which is about the upper range for millennials, while 85% have relatively thinned out mop up top by age 50, mistakenly thought to be an exclusive male condition 40% of hair loss sufferers are actually women. And um, recently, millennials are reporting hair loss much earlier than previous generations. And we've broken down five reasons why millennials may be losing their hair. So the first one is hair loss and the aging process. While millennials are reporting hair loss at a higher rate, the reality is none of the age-related factors have actually changed for us. There are unavoidable genetic factors at play and that makes this an escapable fact in life. The single most important factor to hair loss will always be those troublesome family traits. If hair thinning runs in your family, then you can expect to see it happening eventually. Those genetic factors will only present themselves fully more as you age. So number one is genetics. All right, number two is nutrition. And they said that don't blame genetics for your thinning hair just yet though. Poor nutrition can be another contributing factor for hair loss. What you eat can directly impact whether you keep your full head of hair or whether you start noticing hands full falling out before the age of 50. Millennials are most likely to adopt a vegetarian lifestyle than most generation and um, on the other article they were also saying that you know when you sometimes adapt a vegan diet and if you're not doing it correctly usually sometimes that could be the cause of hair loss as well I have actually talked on this topic I personally have experienced that and it's not because of the vegan diet it's just because that I wasn't doing it properly I just had to point that out because here on the internet especially with the whole vegan lifestyle and the vegan movement you know, a lot of people have been you know adapting the diet as well okay given that meat is a primary source of protein and a key ingredient in hair protein deficiency may be the culprit to thinning hair although I may not necessarily agree to this 100% because there are actually plant-based proteins that are even like way better than eating meat but I totally get it for some people. While meats can indeed be replaced with other sources of protein, many of those on meat-free diets are not adequately replacing the valuable protein from other sources like nuts and beans. And this is absolutely so true. And lysine is an amino acid that helps iron absorption. And it is a very useful supplement in case of meat-free diet. Yeah, you know, actually one thing I can say about this, if you are going to go vegan or vegetarian you definitely need to research um, your food just to make sure that you're getting the right nutrients for your body which is something that I had to learn when I had to transition in a vegetarian in a vegan diet because before um, I didn't know exactly the um, sources of plant-based protein so I would just eat potatoes <laughs> and I'm not really getting that much nutrients or of course I get some but I don't think it's enough at all I wasn't even eating dark green leafy vegetables at all I wasn't even eating spinach um, before or beans which is you know great source of iron and protein and that has affected you know my hair a lot especially if you're not getting B12 or if you have iron deficiency it's good to know your deficiency so that 
you know, when you transition into a vegetarian in, or into a vegan diet, you know where to get those replacements instead of eating meat or any dairy products. All right, number three is toxins. What are toxins exactly? They're biological or chemical substances that causes harm to the body in low concentrations. Unfortunately for millennials, toxins appear to be pretty much everywhere these days. Metallic toxins are fairly common now. And one of the most prominent sources of toxic exposure is pollution. Hair follicles are particularly affected by air pollution, which has been linked to thinning hair and breakage. One hair loss study even showed that millennials flocking to the city has a direct correlation to female hair loss. The hustle of city living comes at price as residents of urban areas experience increased exposure to all kinds of toxins such as smoke, lead, nickel, and sulfur oxide. Alright, here's one thing too. Not surprisingly, the toxins in cigarettes have a huge impact on skin, nails, teeth, and yes, even hair growth. For fuller, healthier hair, it is recommended to eliminate this habit as much as possible. And also talking about like chemicals that we use, you know, as I've said, sometimes the contents on your hair products, you should really watch out for it. Sometimes there are extra harmful chemicals that you apply in your skin, especially on your lotion, and your skin absorbs that. Those um, harmful ingredients on those products can actually um, cause hormonal imbalance in your body. And if you guys didn't know, if your hormones are imbalanced, usually that also causes hair loss. It's actually one of the side effects when your hormones are imbalanced. All right, number four is stress on hair follicles. Recently, we spoke with Dr. Posti about traction alopecia. That is hair loss resulting from um, a pulling force applied to your hair. Unfortunately, this is one of the reasons millennial hair loss is more common in older generation, it's particularly amongst young women. Many popular hairstyles such as high ponytails, sew-in hair extensions, and braids involve a significant amount of hair pulling. Over time, as someone tucks on hair during styling, the hair shaft will weaken, causing thinning around the hairline and eventually bald patches. But here's a good thing. This is reversible if tension relief comes on early, so there's no better time to let your hair down. Okay, number five is mental health. According to the American Psychological Association, millennials are more likely to have stress-induced sleepless nights than any other generation. Millennials are most likely to experience anger and irritability due to stress. There are strong correlations between high levels of stress and hair loss. Stress-induced hair loss can present as increased and diffuse shedding, also known as telogen effluvium, or as a patchy alopecia, as in the case of alopecia areata. Although the APA found that millennials tend to stress about the number of things, one unique stressor to millennials is social media. Can we just all agree on that? Can you just say amen? <laughs> it's really true. I actually know a lot of people who are depressed and stressed because they're aiming for that Instagram filtered life and it's just not happening for them. Some of them, they get really jealous and all that. And I would always tell them, I was like, you know what? What people post on Instagram, usually it's the highlighted versions of their lives. You know, some people actually think that that person's life might be really perfect because, you know, they always post amazing pictures and all that. And I can say that you guys don't know, like that person can be going through hard things in life as well. Trust me, no one's life is perfect. Everyone is going through something and you don't necessarily have to compare yourself and your life to strangers on the internet because they have this and they have that. Learn to, you know, be thankful and appreciate what you have. So let's get back to the topic. <laughs> okay, um, of course there are a number of healthy ways to encounter stress including therapy, meditation, and physical activity. However, finding ways to disconnect from devices should be a high priority for this generation. That is so true. You know, usually when I'm not on YouTube or in social media, my work is still online so I'm still basically online but when I work I usually like turn off my phone phone um, but mostly I'm pretty much saturated all the time on my laptop or my computer so you would definitely notice that sometimes your eyes get stressed out your brain gets foggy you can't really focus well or you know you get headaches and all that you know if you're just overly saturating yourself 
with um, you know working on your laptop or maybe being just on your phone all day so those things can really stress you out I feel like all those things really does affect your health so you know if you don't take care of your body and if you don't take care of your health especially with using devices and radiation basically those factors really does affect your skin and your hair so that is it you guys let me know what you all think about this in the comment section so yeah do you guys agree on these things can you relate let's chat and I will see you on my next video. Bye!